This is very interesting. Really interesting. This is an interesting thing. It's interesting, which is interesting. It's interesting. Interesting. And this is interesting. Interesting. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's really interesting. It's interesting. Which is interesting. 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 These shirts are very, very interesting. And they reflect the wonderful truth that the most interesting people in the world know. And it is that there is so many interesting things in the world to learn about. Get interested, people, with the very interesting shirts. Available through Teespring. Link in the description. Shadiversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and it is time I talk about LARP, which is live action role playing. Now, why would I have an interest in that? Well, there's actually a lot of reasons. I love role playing, and I love swords in the medieval period, and because of medieval fantasy being so popular, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, all that stuff. Live action role play does a lot in this area, and there's a lot of sword fighting involved as well. But is it real sword fighting? And can you learn how to sword fight effectively from doing LARP? Well, that is the very purpose of me making not only this video, but another video, where in this one specifically, I'll be looking at what you can gain out of doing LARP and why it's great for learning how to sword fight. And in my the following video, uh, which is companion to this one, so of course I encourage you to watch it, where I'll talk about the problems and issues that exist for LARP and its limitations in learning how to fight effectively with a sword. In my opinion, the best resource that you can find in learning how to fight effectively, just in the world at large, is through HEMA. Now, HEMA can be misunderstood because uh, it's not just sword fighting. HEMA is any historical European martial arts. But in terms of effective techniques for medieval European swords, HEMA has it all. It's just phenomenal. And one of the things I love about HEMA is how much of a focus it has on aggressive sparring. And that's really where I go to to try and learn how to fight as well. But that's not to say that I haven't done LARP and that I won't do it in the future. I, I really enjoy it. For myself, I wouldn't go to LARP to learn how to sword fight, but there's some really good um, things that you can get out of LARP in that regard. And so one of the, the big things that I find is a huge advantage in LARPing to learn how to sword fight is freedom to experiment. Now, what I'm about to say next doesn't apply to all HEMA practitioners or schools, but it certainly exists where you can find uh, certain HEMA instructors, stuff like that, who will tell you you're not allowed to do it, that this is the way we're doing it, and uh, we're doing uh, And I've literally come across this exact statement. Why are we doing it? Because the, the treatise or the book said that we do it, which I don't think is a good mentality for myself because there's some pretty dumb things that come, can come from historical sources that are not effective in combat. One of the best examples is throwing pummels at people. Uh, I do not think that to be a viable swordsmanship maneuver. Uh, and so the, uh, the uh, mentality that if it's in the, the historical manual, you do it. No, I don't agree with that, but not all HEMA practitioners do. In fact, most HEMA practitioners understand the practical side of things that uh, we're not going to do it just because it says in the book. We're going to try and figure out how this is supposed to work. And we're not going to teach you to do it until we figure out the correct context in which this is used. And this is the big value in HEMA. But because there is that, you know, uh, it exists in some parts uh, and it's the minority, in my opinion, I hope it is, where they don't allow you to try something new or to try a different stance or to try something that's in the manual, but do a variance on it. What if I want to change my footing or I don't want to hold my, the sword so close to my body in this exact sense? What if I want to hold it out, but I'll do this? same cut from this position and so allow being allowed to experiment to figure out what works for you I think is a great advantage or a benefit in learning how to sword fight and in regards to LARP that's all that it is it, <laughs> very few LARP groups will try and teach you know full technique and stuff like that that can be a detriment and I'll get into that into the problems with LARP where uh, uh, incorrect technique, bad footing and uh, types of attacks and other things like that are uh, considered the right way to do it because it works to the people who are using it uh, when they're not using it in the correct environment to really test to see if it's properly effective. Yet sometimes you just want to try something to see if it works. I'm not saying because people can get, uh, you know, take it the wrong way. Freedom to experiment, of course, exists in HEMA and other places where you can learn swordsmanship. It's only that in regards to LARP, there is no barriers in regards to this, except for their rules. If, if it breaks one of their you know, rules, then you're not allowed to experiment in that way. 
So there is a limitation there, but I love just the, the casual freedom about just try and hit the other person with your sword, and if you can, good. Of course, with full swordsmanship, there's more to than just hitting your opponent with your sword. Again, next video. The next thing that I think is brilliant about LARP is the experiment, I said mentioned experimentation, but what I talk about, experimenting with different weapon combinations. Like in LARP, you will fight someone using a sword and shield, and then you'll fight someone who's using a pole arm, and then you'll fight someone using two swords, and it's like in the same session, which is brilliant. And you rarely fight, I've rarely found that in nearly every other swordsman, swordsman fighting thing. Now, Reenactment has a bit more of a, a, a you know variance in types of uh, what weapons are being used and stuff like that. But in regards to say Hema, uh, more often than not, longsword is the most popular one that I've observed. If I'm wrong, I'm happy to be wrong. But it looks to be longsword by far the most popular, with saber also being very popular. And then of course there's rapier and stuff like that. But what you really often find is the people who are learning longsword are fighting against other people using longswords. The people who are who learning saber is fighting other people using sabers. Same with rapiers and stuff like that. And fighting people using other weapon sets seems to be more of the novelty than the norm. Whereas in LARP, fighting people and other th weapon sets seems to be the norm than just fighting people with the same type of weapon, which is, I, I think, brilliant. If you practice your whole life, uh, you know, in longsword to only learn how to fight someone with a longsword, and as soon as you come up against someone with a shield or a pole arm or something like that, you could be pretty screwed. And, and uh, of course, you know, extended practice will help you out to try and adapt, but actually practicing against those types will be even more beneficial than not. The next really awesome thing about LARP is that it's basically constant sparring, okay? Now, <laughs> when you're trying to learn any martial art, uh, and especially, you know, sword fighting, sparring, I believe, is an absolute essential thing. And any martial art that doesn't do sparring, uh, <laughs> the, the people basically will not learn how to apply the techniques they're learning in a combat situation. But if it's only sparring, well then people will not actually figure out the correct footwork and forms, stances and positions that they need. So it should be a combination. Still, what is just so amazing is how much correct technique people do figure out on their own just by sparring. I gotta say, I really dislike the hate that LARP can get. And I've seen this come from both HEMA and reenactment, where they're like, they're using foam weapons, that's so pathetic. <laughs> uh, that really ticks me off. And I've even had people try and accuse that of me because uh, I've put up some, uh, some videos of me doing LARP on here on my channel. Go watch them if you'd like to see me doing LARP. And uh, there was one comment and you probably, uh, there's thousands of comments now, so good luck trying to find it. Uh, but so, something saying to the effect that, um, oh, you can use a foam sword, uh, you know, adequately, but give him a, a steel sword, he'll uh, fall over and he'll barely be able to hold it up. Well, then later, I actually, I, I've, tried, I've used steel swords. And I've trained with foam swords and seen the difference, and it's amazing, okay, how effectively an analog, a foam sword can be in learning technique compared to when you just pick up a steel one. And it's interesting, I haven't had many opportunities to actually engage in aggressive sparring with steel swords. I've got to rely on the synthetic ones, so uh, the, those are the nylon swords and foam swords as well. But I have had opportunity to do uh, aggressive sparring with steel swords. What I can say absolutely from first-hand experience, I felt no limitation anything, I was able to use a steel sword as effectively and proficiently and comfortably as I could a nylon or foam one. So just because people use foam swords is not cause or reason to try and bash on them, which is an elitist attitude to try and say, ah, oh, we're so much better than them. People can actually learn how to fight decently effectively through LARP, okay? That's just what it is. And anyone who says that they can't, I feel they're doing a disservice and being disingenuous. For myself though, to learn swords, swordsmanship, I, uh, I like to use LARP for opportunity to, to experiment and uh, have fun and also sparring and other things like that. But I, I go to HEMA to learn how to sword fight more than well, almost uh, universally as LARP. And LARP is a way to kind of put into practice the things I'm learning. But uh, there's, there's, there's cross-pollination as well. I get to put into practice, you know, when I'm using HEMA, some of the things that I have observed in LARP. Depending on how you approach LARP, so this one uh, is uh, not a complete advantage. 
Having said that though, uh, with the group that I do lap, it is far more intensive physically than when I practice HEMA. The great thing about HEMA, you can set its intensity level to however you want, much you want. You can, you know, just do casual drills. And in the morning, you know, when I try and do my morning training, I mostly just do drills and I set the intensity level to whatever, you know, I feel like. You don't really have that option in LARP. LARP it ends up being far more competitive and there's a lot more running around. And I, when I did it, gee, I knacker myself when I do LARP. So much so that my own health limitations because of certain medical conditions I have limits the amount of LARP I, LARPing I can do. <laughs> so that's interesting. I can do HEMA more often because it's I can set the intensity level to something that suits my medical conditions better than I can with LARP. LARP is running around just full on crazy. I should also say, LARP is different between different groups. The group that I do, there's a lot of, like the that I do LARP in, I mean, is that uh, there's a lot of focus on the battle game side of things, where other groups have a, a way stronger focus on the role playing side of things. So you get different things out of different groups. But my goodness, the, the local group, very physically intense. Like if you want to uh, really, you know, win the game, so to speak, you need to do a lot of running around and stuff like that from, from what I've experienced so far, that is. So if you want to, you know, get fit and lose weight, there you go. LARP is a, a great option. I wanted to bring in someone who has more technical expertise in regards to swordsmanship than I do. And so here is uh, uh, Martin Ostwick, or he likes to be called Oz, from the YouTube channel English Martial Arts. And he has been a HEMA instructor for years. And so I've asked Martin to share with us his single, the thing that he finds to be the single greatest benefit in regards to LARP being applied to learning how to fight effectively with a sword. So Martin, what's your thoughts in regards to that question? Hey Shad, how you doing? It's a really interesting question actually. Um, I've been teaching HEMA for around about 20 years and probably over the last four or five years I've had a lot of people come to my club that already participate in sword fighting uh, predominantly in live action roleplay in LARP and and I think that there is a real a real advantage to it there, in fact, I think there are a lot of advantages to it, but that's not the question. The question is what's the, the single biggest uh, benefit, if you like. Um, in, in HEMA, we've got this, this kind of real tendency to take ourselves very seriously and to think of this thing as this really important art that we're developing. And to a degree, that's understandable. Um, I'm not, I've been at fault with that and on a number of occasions but within LARP they've kind of still got this almost childlike enjoyment out of in what they do it's almost as if the reason they do it the predominant reason for doing LARP is because it's fun and that comes across into the swordplay that they do within HEMA and I think they they the 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 LARPers within my group, they all love to fight, they're all good at it, they all do it a lot, and they all enjoy it. And I think it's all down to this, this kind of sense of fun. And, and I think a lot of the time in HEMA, we forget that swords are cool and fighting with them is fun. And, and we need to kind of step back and learn that lesson from the, the LARP guys that you know, it's got to be fun. That's why we do it, right? So, I think that's probably the single biggest advantage. Um, I think because it's fun, LARP guys tend to fight a lot. And that gives you a big advantage. You know, you can study the, the odd drill here or the techniques here and there. You can go along to your HEMA training every week without fail. And you'll get pretty good. But if you're out there fighting for hours at a time, every weekend, as well as coming training, and you spar, and you play, and you have fun, and you enjoy it, then you're going to become a lot better as a swordsman. Um, so in my experience, LARP guys tend to make great swordsmen, and they do very well within the HEMA community, because they enjoy it. And they don't pretend that it's something that it isn't. So I hope that's answered your question. Um, and I'll leave you to it. Take care, mate. Thanks, mate. 
very grateful for sharing your thoughts in regards to this and my goodness I wholeheartedly agree with Oz as well. I certainly have seen that uh, you know uh, passionate love for swordsmanship in HEMA but I've also come across far more criticism and vitriol from the HEMA community for sharing thoughts that can run contrary in even small criticisms that I have observed. But that isn't representative of HEMA as a whole, but I just find there is a higher tendency of people taking it perhaps a little too seriously. Again, because uh, in my experience so far, every time I've mentioned things like that, people think I'm criticizing HEMA as a whole. I'm not. That's a subset of people who really perhaps don't represent what HEMA is. HEMA, uh, what we would like HEMA to be, is this wonderful, inclusive community where everyone's getting together to learn about things that we love, which is primarily swords because swords are awesome. And I echo the thoughts that Martin has shared as well. And there you go. This has been why LARP is great and beneficial uh, in regards to learning how to fight well with a sword. Please follow me on to the following video where I'll talk about the things that I feel are detrimental in LARP in regards to learning how to fight with a sword. Thank you for watching. Again, big thank you to Martin. Go check out Martin's channel if you haven't had a chance, English Martial Arts, where he uh, talks about, of course, HEMA, sword fighting, but he's also a pugilist, which means he knows the unarmed martial arts, the historical unarmed martial arts of Europe. And so he's made heaps of videos, fight reviews, and also some pretty funny katana comparisons which have also appeared in one of his videos as well. So go check him out if you have the opportunity to. You won't be disappointed. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. And until then, farewell.